This week on Newsround Extra, the biggest computer games battle ever. We check out the competition and get an exclusive first look at the PlayStation 2. At exactly midnight on October the 13th last year, while most of us were fast asleep, hundreds of shops throughout the UK opened their doors to let customers come in and buy throughout the night. Normally, you wouldn't expect to find too many people wanting to do their shopping in the early hours of the morning, especially not me, but this was no ordinary night. It was the launch of a new video games console called the Dreamcast. Hundreds of people queued waiting for the shops to open. These people were amongst the first to experience the next generation of video gaming. These next generation consoles allow us to play games like we've never seen before. They're faster, better looking and claim to be much, much more fun to play. So far only Sega, the company that developed the Dreamcast, has given the public a taste of the future. Take Ben Jackson for instance, he used to be a big PlayStation fan. Old technology. But now it lays to rest as his attention's on the Dreamcast. Hey! Uh, I've had the Dreamcast for quite a few months now, and when my mates come around they're like, wow those graphics are rad. Newer games like Soul Calibur, they're huge as well, so they're, they're really good. The Dreamcast is also the first machine to offer internet access, so you can play a game against someone anywhere in the world. Okay, that's Sega, but what about Sony and Nintendo? What are their plans? Well, we phoned, we emailed, we even went to the UK headquarters of Sony and Nintendo to try and get a glimpse of their new console, but no one there could help us. The best they could do was point out a few pictures in magazines. Well, thanks. And so I thought, where do I need to go to get a glimpse of the future? Unfortunately, the answers are thousands of miles away. Yes, I had to take a trip to Japan. I know, the life of a newsroom presenter can be hard. And so here I am in Tokyo, home of all that's high-tech. But I can't speak a word of the language, so I've got my friend Masa here to help me. Hi, Masa, how's it going? I'm great, yeah. Let's take a look around. Okay, okay, let's go. Much as I'd like to spend my time sightseeing in this incredible city, I've arranged an appointment to go and see the PlayStation 2. I kind of guess you might want to see it. Hey, and there it is, the Sony building. And inside is the most hotly awaited console in years. Now this is what all the fuss is about, the PlayStation 2 console. Now, it might look good, but can it perform? Now this is Mr. Yamauchi, he's one of the people who's behind one of the new games for the PlayStation 2, Gran Turismo 2000. Now, what can it do that other consoles, like the PlayStation 1 and the Dreamcast, can't do? PlayStation 2 is based on DVD technology. This means you can watch movies. Compared to PlayStation 1, the graphics and sound are far more realistic. As a games developer, how much easier has this machine made it to make your games as realistic as possible? PlayStation 2 allows me to express my feelings and I have total creative freedom to make the graphics and sound exactly as I want. The question is, can I have a go? Okay, now this is one of the very first PlayStation 2s to come off the production line and only people that work for Sony have had the chance to use it so far. So I'm one of the very first people in the world to be able to have a go on it. Now the graphics are incredibly smooth on this. It's almost like playing an arcade game. And the sun's so bright you feel you'll need to wear sunglasses. Oh, and I've hit somebody and I've hit the side. I've never actually driven a racing car, but I would imagine it must be pretty close to something like this. This is so much better than the original PlayStation game and it's like playing a game in an arcade. It's so smooth and it's so realistic. The PlayStation 2 is being launched here in Japan in just six weeks time. But sadly, it won't appear in the UK until sometime in the autumn. And no one knows if it'll match the Dreamcast price tag of £199. Another developer, Konami, are working round the clock to develop games for the PlayStation 2 with a respectable track record of hit titles like Metal Gear Solid and Dance Mania, 
what do they think will be possible with the next generation of video gaming? We're just still exploring what the machine could do. So I think maybe by next year or two years' time, people will have more excitement when they find that they could do this and this and more and more and more. Some of the titles that we're creating will just going to be stunning. They'll be absolutely stunning. The Dreamcast and the PlayStation 2, I mean, which were the developers here more excited about working with? The PlayStation 2's advantage is the, the computer itself, because it is so intelligent. You could show graphics much more real than it was before. For the Dreamcast, um, there are a lot of advantages, but one advantage is that it can be hooked up to the net. Sony has been instrumental in making video games the cool toy to own. The PlayStation has clearly dominated the games industry, with well over 5 million consoles sold so far in the UK. Sony, uh, obviously 70 million PlayStation stored worldwide, the biggest console that ever has been. Um, people just looking to PlayStation 2 like, oh, it's like the sun's coming up, it's like the god of consoles, it really is going to be something special. It had better be people spend more money on computer games than they do enjoying Hollywood films. It's one of the world's most popular forms of entertainment, something that no one could have predicted when the first computer games were launched 30 years ago. 30 years. Yes, video games have been around for a very long time indeed. Now, I'm what looks like an ordinary video game shop in Buckinghamshire, but in the warehouse out back, they've got machines from all over the year stacked up. Come on, follow me. Now, this is Richard. He owns the place. Richard, you must know everything there is to know about video games. Which one's this? Well, this is the Atari VCS console from the 1970s. The game you can see is Space Invaders. Games back then didn't really have fancy graphics or even music, but did people still find them fun? Up until then, they hadn't seen computer games, and obviously they were amazing for their time. The problem is that games machines get out of date within just a few years. As the new consoles appear, it can be difficult to know which one to buy. At the moment, Sega are having quite an easy time grabbing our attention. The Dreamcast is clearly the most powerful console ever built, but that won't last forever. Soon, the PlayStation 2 will be shouting for us to take a look, and on that day, Console Wars will commence. Console Wars is all about who is going to be the ultimate champion, the best console, the best games. There isn't room for two. I would probably buy uh, Sega Dreamcast. I'm not buying Dreamcast, I'm waiting for PlayStation 2. I bought the Dreamcast because I heard that you could um, play online. PlayStation 2 is definitely going to be a lot better. It's Sega Dreamcast is already out on the market and everybody knows the PlayStation 2 is just on the horizon waiting to strike. It's going to be a console war, there's going to be a real battle. So is the PlayStation 2 a threat to the Dreamcast? Well, the people who must know the answer to that question are its makers, Sega. And I'm just about to find out a bit more about the machine at their headquarters, which are supposed to be round here somewhere. Oh, OK, it's that way. OK, brilliant. There's a Sega building there, but there's another one here. Which side? Ah! Oh, shit. Oh, OK, OK. No, we don't have time. He's the boss of the whole like, Sega company. Sega. Like, it's going to be top floor, biggest office, OK? Right, um, so how do I introduce myself? How do, do I bow? Do I say... Oh, yeah. Hajime Mashite. Hajime Mashite. No, no, we don't have time for that. We don't have time. You have to speak Chinese. Wish me luck. He's already here. Oh, Hajime Mashite. No? Good to meet you. Hello. Awfully well, well, sorry I'm late. Um, oh, so if, I, if I could start off by asking you, uh, how pleased are you with the launch of uh, the Dreamcast across the world? Oh. Uh, last year we launched the uh, Dreamcast in US and in Europe, and so far uh, the sales has been very, very well. When the PlayStation 2 does hit the streets, is it going to be real war between Sony and Sega to see who's going to win? We will uh, compete against uh, Sony and Nintendo, so uh, uh, we have uh, a big confidence that uh, we can win. Yeah. Who's going to fail? <laughs> <laughs> I don't say uh, the uh, uh, specific name, but uh, we will survive. It's not going to be the Dreamcast then. The Dreamcast will be there. It's not going to be one of the failures. I think uh, PlayStation 2 uh, will be a little bit better uh, in terms of the graphics. But uh, other features, uh, the internet access, the price point, and the uh, uh, game titles, 
uh, we have a big advantage. I've got a great idea for a new game. It's, it's called Tokyo Traffic Warden, and you've got to go around and you've got to book cars that are parked in the wrong place and things like that. I mean, how much would you pay me for a, a concept like that? What? That's a crazy <laughs> idea, right? <laughs> Thanks very much. That's okay. brilliant. Sega says it's delighted by the success of the Dreamcast so far, and they're confident that their machine has enough exciting features to give the PlayStation 2 a run for its money. One of the main selling points for the Dreamcast is this. It's called the VMU. Now, this handheld games machine will soon be used in some really interesting ways. For example, you'll be able to use it to play mini versions of Dreamcast games. All you need to do is load it into the handheld games controller like this, and it instantly loads it up. Take it out, and you can play it while you're walking to school. If you want to play games against a friend, they can be connected together. Now, the most impressive thing about this device is that you can actually plug it into an arcade machine and carry on playing the game you were playing earlier on your Dreamcast. Now, this machine at Ferrari, its 355 Challenge, will be one of the very first machines to actually let you do this. But if having to choose between two systems wasn't enough, Nintendo are also waiting in the wings. Yes, they're working on a new games console too. Now, Nintendo are notoriously secretive about their next generation consoles, but they did send us an email about what they're calling Project Dolphin. Unlike the Nintendo 64, which uses cartridges, this will run off CDs. It'll also play DVD movies, and it might well be shown at a big computer games fair in Japan this September. But is it all leaving things a bit too late? It's a question no one knows the answer to yet, but one thing's for sure. The world's biggest computer games companies are starting the 21st century with a race like we've never seen before. At the moment, PlayStation's in the lead, but it could be overtaken by faster, more exciting machines. For the winning company, the prize will be massive. And for gamers, things look set just to get better and better.